Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today we are in Korpak, but we are about to go and see the uh, the boat of coal. Cool. I don't know why, but I always want to call it coal. I know it's spelt that way, but it is pronounced cool. If you didn't know, um, you probably do, but for some reason I always seem to struggle with that. I don't know why. So my name's Kieran, and this is Pauline. I'm a landscape photographer living in the Fort William area, about to go photograph one of the classics. The old boat of cool looks absolutely incredible. The water's very still out there. We've got nice reflections. The sun's just starting to come up. And um, there's gaps in the low level cloud, which is revealing the very high level clouds. And we're starting to get a really nice glow coming through. The Ben is out and it looks like there might even be some cloud coming over into the valley at the back, which is gonna look absolutely beautiful. Um, but yeah, so it's gonna be an interesting morning, a very classic scene, hopefully with a different view. So here we are at the old boat of cool. And the first thing I want to do before that sun gets high enough to create some drama in the sky that I want to capture is I want to come around the scene and do a little bit of editing, okay? And what I mean by come and do a bit of editing is do something now so later I don't have to edit then. So at the moment we've got a few different distractions on the beach that we don't necessarily want in our shot. So like this little bit of blue rope down here Okay, that's pretty fixed. <laughs> that's not going anywhere. But what I can do is I can cover it up with some of this debris so that it's less distracting on that final shot. There's a few other things underneath here. Like there's this, I think maybe an old battery, a bit of table, but they're of a darker color. So hopefully they're going to be less distracting. But the shot that I captured that has brought me back to this location that has been I've been hoping for really nice conditions for. And fingers crossed they're gonna to come today. Involved this rope right here. You can even see where a photographer has actually been setting it up for a shot. I'm not sure if that's inspired by my shot or uh, they've come down and been a bit creative themselves. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with that shot too. Um, it's a nice, easy shot and a rope like this makes a great foreground interest and leading line into that shot. It helps tell a story. So it's quite important on how you set it up. So as you saw, we did quite a bit of adjustments to there. We weren't sure whether to have pointy angles or whether to have round angles. We've tried going starting with the round angles but the beautiful thing about having a rope such as this is you can pretty much do it however you like there's no wrong or right way of doing it but at the moment we've got a clearing just next to the bend and we've seen a hint of color starting to form on the rim of that cloud so the cirrus has been lit and that's gone now so now we're hoping the lower level cloud is going to start to capture that light. The Ben is looking fantastic. I've got a quite a close relationship with the old boat of cool and the Ben, but I don't think that's off-putting. I think the boat leads perfectly in to the Ben. Fingers crossed anyway. So I've got an awesome composition. Everything just fell into place. Maybe that's experience. Maybe that's luck. I'm not too sure, but just have a little look at this. So I'm going to raise the exposure slightly, just so you can see what I've got. I've got this beautiful bit of rope sitting down on the bottom left. I love the way it swirls up, comes round, and then zigzags through 
into the boat itself. The bend just sitting off to one side and that light starting to form in that gap. Remember, the, record, the, the picture itself is always going to be slightly wider than what you can see on this video. But I think this is going to be a really nice composition. So I'm going to shoot this in two parts, one for the boat and one for that rope in the immediate foreground. So it is going to be a bit of a focus stack. And for some people, that is not their favorite thing. But with a, a subject like this down so close to the lens and a subject like that, they both talk to each other really well. So I think it's important that they're both in focus. So I'm going to capture the first shot on a two shot, uh, two shot bracket. I'm going to shot, shoot it one bracket for the sky and then shoot another bracket for the boat and the foreground. Okay, so the first shot is on one eighth of a second F11 ISO 64. The second shot is going to be a bracket and a half brighter. And there you are, you can see that on screen. Look at the difference between the, the underexposed for the sky and then the exposed correctly for the boat itself. Absolutely beautiful. Then I'm going to come down to where the rope is, down in the immediate foreground, and I'm going to get right close to myself. I'm going to open my aperture as wide as it can be, so I've got a really shallow depth of field. Focus on the rope, close the aperture back to f11, and that should mean that it's going to be perfectly sharp on that rope, and do exactly the same shot as what I did before. looking brilliant. Now for the second shot with a different feel. That's the idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over this way and I'm going to grab this tree. Oh that's very heavy. For the second shot what I'm going to do is I'm going to involve this tree trunk. I'm thinking maybe shoot through the V of the tree down the branches into the boat. But what I want to do is I want to include more of the mountains more of that sky. Before it seemed quite close, quite compressed. I want to take in more of that scene on this one. So hopefully it's going to tell more of a story. So little adjustments are really important with a shot like this. You want the subject to be getting pointed at. So at the moment I've come down and from the back of my camera, it should look like the tree roots are pointing straight at the boat. By becoming lower, the scene has been brought to life. That looks so much better. And now I've started to involve this branch. So a little adjustments to the tripod can make big impacts to your image. And what I really like about this composition is the way that the tree takes over that expanse of foregrounds. It creates interest. So I'm gonna get that first shot. So there's two of the three shots. Now I think it's time for the third one. So the third and final shot, I'm gonna go for something a little bit more telephoto. And this wasn't spotted by me. This was spotted by Pauline on the way here. So it's gonna be a quick little change of lens. And I'm gonna put on the 70 to 200. And I'll have to say out of all of my lenses, this is easily the sharpest.
that telephoto image, you've got to come back away from that scene so you can get that compression between all the different elements when only involving the north side to get this composition. But it is looking absolutely beautiful. So we just stopped and chatted. And uh, while we were chatting away, the reflection's gone. But what has happened is we've got a nice beam of light coming across the bend. I'm gonna go a little bit wider. I'm exposing all them highlights. Now I've got a definite beam coming across. It looks incredible. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be patient. I'm going to wait for that beam to come all the way down, cover the bend, and then get that shot. A few times I've missed opportunities because I've been like, I'm going to be patient. So I've got my safety shot, looking awesome. And then let's see what happens as that light travels down camera Jarek and then starts to hit the bend. So Pauline was right, and uh, that means that I'm cooking the breakfast this morning. I'm always right. She is normally right. Um, but the light faded, so grabbing that safety shot was super important. And yeah, we got it. So big thank you to Pauline for doing some filming, B-roll, and a bit of flying. No, you didn't do the flying, <laughs> did you? I did the flying, but we will get it back on that drone, I promise. Um, and for those that have stuck with it, so I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, yeah, come to a location, test yourself, see if you can get three different images with three different feels all at the same place. It will test your skills and it's always good practice to try something different. All right, that's going to be all from us. Have a lovely week. Peace out, peeps. So we're just going to give a quick shout out to the two people that we met while we were uh, doing our vlog. Um, we, I forgot to ask names and I apologise, I really do. Um, it was lovely to meet you guys and uh, I'm sure we'll see you again.